Another one from Peter. <clears throat> Question here from Peter. What is implication and compression language? Okay, implication and compression language. These, these are terms that I've used to describe uh, hypnotic suggestion and the way that Ericsson worked and the way that I encourage you to work and to develop this ability to compress and use implication rather than direction in your work as a hypnotherapist if you want to be Ericksonian. So let's take those two things, implication and compression. What is implication? It's a kind of, it's an indirect suggestion for something without actually saying what it is you want. That is an art. You have to develop that ability, but you can do that. You can write something down that's very direct and think, okay, how can I imply that instead of saying it? And this is the art, say, that Ericsson developed with his indirect language patterns. He'd be able to influence behavior without actually saying something. And there are lots of little stories about Ericsson uh, testing his ability to do this. There's one story where he woke up one morning when he was very young. He woke up one morning and the ground was covered in snow outside his house. And normally the children used to go to school would follow the footpath across this park to the school. And Ericsson, wondering whether he could influence the behavior of several hundred people, decided to go out before the school uh, kids left. And he created his own path of footsteps back and forwards, a different one from the actual one that was normally there. He then sat back in his house and watched while all of the children went to school and followed his path rather than the actual path that was under the snow. So can you see what that, that means? It's like not directly doing something, you're implying the path is there and people are being influenced by that implication. So this is what we mean by implication. Let me give you another example. Okay, let's, let's say you, a client comes in into your uh, practice. This is if you're seeing people face to face. They come into your practice and there's two chairs. Okay, not three, mm -hmm. that's hip hip array, right? Two chairs and you want the client to sit in one chair and uh, you want them to sit down, but you're both standing up. What choices do you have? Okay, let's look at the traditional hypnotist approach, okay, in terms of like how hypnosis is perceived by so many people as being direct authoritarian. Okay, sit in that chair on the count of three, sit in that chair. And of course, you know, even they don't do that because the person's not in trance yet. But can you imagine the context? Sit in that chair. That's very direct, okay. No implication involved, sit in that chair or else. Okay, how else could you say that or, or somehow imply sit in the chair without actually saying it? Well, you could say, you can say, um, I bet you're tired walking here. Would you like to sit down? That's much more polite, right? Or you could say, hmm, uh, it's about time we started the session. They sit down, okay. Let's step back even further. How can we imply it without saying anything? What could you do? What could you think about? Think about this now. What could you do to get them to sit down? Something just come to my mind. You could point at the chair. You just put the chair. Okay. No words. Point to the chair. Okay. Can we get even more subtle than that? Can we imply something without making a gesture that points to the chair? How about we sit down? So we sit down first. What does the client do? They're not going to stand there waiting. They're going to follow your implication, your suggestion, your nonverbal suggestion, and they're going to follow you and sit down. So this is the difference between direct and implied. Okay, so let's come back to Peter. Uh, implication and compression. So what is compression? Well, it's, it's different from implication. Compression is attempting to put as much implication into as few words as possible. So you compress the implications. So first of all, you have to master the art of implication. And the way you do that, as I say, is just look at a direct suggestion and then think how you can imply the same thing without actually saying it as a direct suggestion. Compression is you have a series of indirect suggestions. and think, how can I compress those into one sentence, one phrase, one suggestion? 
So you've got multiple implications within a few words, because this is where we get into layering language. You see, Erickson didn't just give a suggestion. When he said anything, there'd be two or three things he was saying simultaneously. There may have been two or three different outcomes embedded through implication in those words, or it may have been two, two or three different levels of achieving the same outcome, but said in different ways. So if you can develop this ability to, to create implications and then compress them into as few words as possible, then that is basically what I mean, Peter, when I say, uh, I talk about implication and compression language.